Sleepers to target in the upcoming 2023-2024 fantasy basketball season. The first person I want to talk about is DeAnthony Melton. Melton enjoyed a career high in terms of games played with 77 and minutes per game with 28. He actually was second in the league with total steals with 126, which averages out to about 1.6 per game. So he's going to bring it every night on the defensive end. But he's also a three-point specialist. He averaged about 2.1 makes per game and shot it pretty efficiently, knocking down about 39% of them. Before Melton got to Philly last year, he was on Memphis, stuck behind John Morant. But even then, he was productive when he was with the Grizzlies. And last year, we saw what he can do when he gets minutes. Both Tyrese Maxey and James Harden missed time, paving the way for Melton to create a role like he did. And I think this year, if James Harden gets his wish and gets traded, then Melton could really absorb a lot of those open shots and minutes. But even if Harden doesn't end up getting traded, I think Melton's still going to have a sizable role on this team. He's going to be backing up Tyrese Maxey, and even last year we saw him alternate starts with Maxey. So he's going to find a way to be productive whenever he is on the court. He had a little bit more than four rebounds per game last year, almost two and a half assists, and also had half a block. And that's pretty impressive for a 6'2 guard. On a per game basis last year, he returned 7th round value. And this is someone you're probably going to be able to get inside of the top 100 towards the end of your drafts. He also shoots it pretty efficiently, about 43% from the field and 79% from the charity stripe. So he's really not going to hurt you anywhere. And I think like I mentioned, if Harden does end up getting traded, Melton could end up being one of the better picks of this year. Next up, Gary Trent Jr. Gary Trent Jr. took a small step back last year from his 2021-2022 season, but he was still really good. He chipped in two and a half three-pointers per game and had 1.6 steals per game. And a lot of his value dipped once the Raptors traded for Jakob Pertl. Once Pertl joined the team, Trent started coming off the bench, and that's when we saw his usage decrease a bit. I think this year with Fred Van Vliet no longer on the team, that should open up a lot of shots and minutes for Trent Jr. He's also playing for a contract. He opted into the last year of his three-year deal, so... He's trying to get paid just like anybody in the last year of their contract. And I'm sure he's going to be chasing stats a bit to show other teams what he can do. If you do decide to draft him, you could probably get him right inside the top 100. He won't give you very many rebounds. He had about two and a half per game or assists. He had about one and a half per game. But what he will give you is top tier three and D stats and also solid percentages. He shoots at 43% from the field, 37% from deep, and about 84% from the free throw line. Next up, Herbert Jones. Herbert Jones has established himself as one of the best defenders in the NBA. The only thing holding him back from really taking that next step has been scoring. He averages a little less than 10 points per game, but over his first two seasons, he's had 1.6 steals per game and almost half a block. The other thing in his way is the fact that the Pelicans have so many capable wings. Trey Murphy is obviously there. They also have Najee Marshall. So he's only been able to show what he can do when people have been out of the lineup. And I think it's going to take that same formula for him to have consistent value this year. I think he's going to be a great streamer. He may not be rostered everywhere. And you may be able to get him at the very, very end of your drafts. But I think he's worth rostering just because of his elite defensive stats. And with Trey Murphy coming off of a left knee surgery and potentially missing a little bit of time to start the season, I have to think Herb Jones is going to get some extra run in the first few weeks. And if Ingram, Williamson, Marshall, or Murphy miss any time, Jones should be the first one to absorb those minutes. If you draft him, expect elite defensive stats and also some solid rebounding and some minimal assists. But he's really not going to hurt you anywhere besides points. And I think if he does find a way to get consistent minutes, he could be one of the better steals of this year. Next up on my list, Corey Kispert. Kispert is someone I think that people are not going to think about to begin the year, so he will not get drafted at all. But as the season goes on, I think he's going to show what he can do from deep. He gives me Kevin Herter vibes. We saw a big jump in his three-point percentage last year. He went from 35% in his rookie year to 42 in his sophomore year. And with Bradley Beal out of town, there's going to be a lot of shots available. I know the Wizards brought in Jordan Poole and re-signed Kyle Kuzma, but Kispert could be the leader off the bench. I could see him getting five or six three-point attempts per game. He averaged 5.2 last year, so they gave him a green light from deep, and I think he should have a good chance to improve his game. He really won't get you too many peripheral stats. He had less than three rebounds per game and a little bit more than one assist and about half a stock per game. So don't expect too much more beyond good percentages and solid three-point shooting, but I would keep an eye on him as the season goes on. I expect his usage to increase this year and for him to be one of the better three-point shooters in the league. Lastly on my list, Kevon Looney. Kevon Looney has played 82 games two years in a row, and for a guy that had injury concerns coming out of UCLA, you have to feel good for him. And last year, he enjoyed a career year, having career highs in points, rebounds, steals, 
blocks, and assists. And I think he's going to be able to either maintain or slightly build off of those numbers. I know the Warriors brought in Dario Saric, so he'll probably compete with him a little bit, but he's going to be backing up Draymond. And with the rapport he has with Steve Kerr, I have to think Looney's going to be able to get 25 to 26 minutes a game. The Warriors like to run really shallow rotations, and I think his spot is very secure. You may or may not have to draft him. I don't think you will. You could probably get him after your drafts, but he's more of a third center and a big man that's going to provide you consistent stats. Nothing will really jump off of the page, but if you're looking for someone that's incredibly consistent and durable, Looney is your guy. Those are five sleepers I would definitely keep an eye on going into your drafts. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and let me know your thoughts on the upcoming season in the comments below.